Hey everybody, today I wanna to teach all of my viewers and subscribers how to read an MTF chart, modular transfer function. It is the industry standard of how lenses are measured for sharpness. Now, something I like to do when I'm teaching one-on-one -on -one in person is I like to ask my students to explain to me in their own words what an MTF chart is. If you think you know, pause the video, say it out loud, and start the video again once you've done so. So I'm going to give you my one sentence explanation of an MTF chart, which is the measurement of a lens's ability in percentage to transfer an image in terms of sharpness relative to the center of the lens to the outside. So this chart that we see on MTF charts, these are percentage scores. And if we talk specifically about the chart, we have a y-axis, which is the percentage. Sometimes it's, it's expressed as one or 100% at the top. And then we have the x-axis, which starts at the center of the lens, and it moves further and further away from the center in millimeters. If we were to use a target such as one black line right next to a white line, there would be a tremendous amount of contrast between those two lines. This is also referred to as a line pair. Now, because glass is uh, not always perfect, in fact, no lens is perfect, but let's say it was a perfect lens and it's able to transfer an image without any loss of sharpness or res resolution at all onto a sensor and it scored 100% all the way through the lens, we would see one straight line at the very tippity top, 100% or one. And this is also a signal to noise ratio. Relative to the signal, how much noise degraded that signal. So very high performing lenses, we're going to see straighter lines closer to the top. The truth is, however, for photographic lenses, typically the further we get away from the center, there is more degradation which means that we see these curves that go down. Now, when I say degradation, what am I talking about? Well, in some cases, if you were to take a very clean target, black line close to a white line, take a picture of it and zoom in, we don't always see this perfect black line next to a white line. We see a little bit of fading, maybe a little bit of gray, and there's a little bit of loss of edge fidelity. It becomes a little bit blurry. That's what I'm talking about when I say degradation or a loss of some of the signal. Now, some generalities I can tell you about MTF charts is that if it scores over 0.8, it's considered exceptional, very high performing lens. If there is a score below 0.6, it's pretty average. Now, there are some other very interesting generalities. Typically, primes are sharper than zoom lenses, and the reason is there's fewer elements in prime lenses and therefore it doesn't have to go through as many lens groupings and therefore there's less degradation. So if you are a sharpness freak, you're probably gonna to wanna to look at primes. Coming back to MTF charts, however, the truth of the matter is most MTF charts do not have a single line that measures lens sharpness. Lens sharpness is typically defined, scientifically at least, as a balance between contrast and resolution. Contrast, to me, is this edge fidelity. It's how clean and how crisp the tonal differences are in edges. And sometimes we can improve this in post-processing. In Photoshop, we can increase the contrast sometimes. But when we're talking about the original image, it's the ability of a lens to maintain that tonal difference. Resolution is a little bit different. It talks about how fine of detail an image can can be transferred to the sensor. And if we were to look at three images, let's say one that has high contrast but low resolution, we would obviously get, uh, it wouldn't be as sharp, not as much detail. If we had very, very high resolution and low contrast, it would look terrible. We wouldn't wanna use that either. But it's only when we combine the two, contrast, which is edge fidelity, tonal fidelity, combined with detail is when we see this very, very sharp image that's pleasing to the eye, and we zoom in, and the edges are all clean, and there's lots of detail. That is a very sharp image for the most part. A lot of this is subjective, depending on the media that we're publishing in, or you know what 
our own personal opinions are and things of that nature. For some people, hey, this lens is great, super sharp, and for other people, it wouldn't be enough. So there's a lot of subjectivity in there. So remember that target I told you about, the line pair, the black line next to the white line? It turns out this is part of the targets being used, except that they use many line pairs. In fact, for contrast measurement, it's typically 10 line pairs. And for a resolution measurement, it may be 30 or 40 line pairs per millimeter. So as we increase the number of line pairs that we're stuffing into a single millimeter, the ability and the performance of a lens to accurately reproduce them on a sensor goes down. And this is why we get two different sets of lines. We get a, a top one and a lower one. The higher score is for contrast and the lower score is for resolution. Keeping this in mind, you're going to say, but Michael, there's typically two sets of lines for every set. Why are, what are these dashed lines? What are these solid lines? So I'll explain that. Essentially, if we were to draw a line from the center of the lens out to the furthest edge, this is, would be referred to as the radius. So if the line pairs are oriented parallel to the radius, these are radial or sagittal targets. They run parallel. If we were to rotate them 90 degrees, tangential or meridional, those are the dashed lines. It's easy to remember because you think the ta tangents kind of chop up uh, the radius. So that's what the difference is between those two sets of lines when you see them is some of the targets are running parallel and some of them are running perpendicular. Now as a side note, typically the closer those sets of lines are together, the higher performing the lens is. And additionally, the closer the individual uh, tangential and the radial or the meridional and the sagittal lines are together, the more pleasing the bokeh. But again, a lot of this depends on your subject and your distance and your focus and things of that nature. Something that Canon does, and I think it's a great idea, is they repeat the tests and you see them as these blue lines because they stop the lenses down. Most lenses, the vast majority of lenses become sharper as you stop them down. I know there's a temptation to always shoot wide open, but typically lenses start getting really sharp as soon as you stop them down one or two stops. So something that I would definitely recommend is take a look at different MTF charts from different manufacturers and you'll see right away that some of their methodology is different. Sometimes they use 30 line pairs, sometimes they use 40. And the truth of the matter is, we can't really compare MTF charts from different manufacturers because there's so many variables that we don't know about. If the variables were all the same in all the tests and it was like a standardized MTF, they had to follow a certain protocol, then we could. But the truth of the matter is sensors are different. The processing mechanisms are different. Sometimes, sometimes they have aliasing filters, sometimes they don't. You have X-Trans sensors and Fuji cameras. And so there's lots of different things happening within these tests. The sensor design, the pixel pitch, all these things come into play when we're talking about sharpness and resolution. We'll address some of those in future videos. However, probably safe to be able to compare MTF charts from a single manufacturer because the process would be similar enough. Now, one last thing I gotta uh, warn you guys about is that th some of the tests are theoretical. Okay, so they're tested by a computer model and other MTF charts are physical where they actually sit down and they test the lens. And some other things you should know is that because we're talking about glass, which is not a perfect material, there's going to be variance even between copies. So if I have a 24 to 72.8 version two and you have one, and we take a picture of the same exact thing on the same exact settings, we're not going to see the same exact sharpness performance comparing between lenses, but not only that, within the lens itself. So four different corners that could possibly be tested and there's going to be variance between those. So MTF charts are not perfect. They're not going to be exact or precise, but they can give you a ballpark idea of what you can expect However, until you test it out on whatever it is your subject matter is that you shoot, you're really not going to know exactly what you have. In any event, that is how to read an MTF chart in my own words, and I hope that you guys would be able to go out and explain it to your photographer friends 
in a frank, easygoing discussion. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. If you found this video helpful, you might be interested in one of my many courses on DSLRs as well as advanced techniques. They're available worldwide by download and they come with a 100% money back guarantee. You can order them from the following link.